Hey guys, today I have a pretty cool vintage calculator to show you. This is a Texas Instruments model TI-1025. It's a basic calculator and it was made in 1978. I uh, actually had a legitimate reason to buy this calculator. I bought it on eBay for $9.55 in total. I needed a basic calculator uh, for my digital systems class. The reason we needed a basic calculator is because there was some basic math uh, that we had to do in the class. We had to, for example, convert binary numbers to decimal, and there's a way to do that with some basic calculations. And, you know, adding numbers that have a long string of decimals and stuff, you know, just basic stuff like that. But uh, we were not allowed to have a scientific calculator at all. If you had a scientific calculator, you weren't allowed to use it because there are scientific calculators that can just directly convert between number formats. I know uh, Sharp makes a calculator where you can type in a decimal number and it'll instantly convert it to hexadecimal or binary or whatever for you. Even though there are some scientific calculators that can't do that, you could not have a scientific calculator. If you brought one into a test or whatever, you were told to put it away and that was it. This is a pretty nice calculator. It's in absolutely mint condition, not a scratch on it at all, and uh, it actually came in the original box. This is what's called a memory calculator back in the day when memory was a nice feature uh, to have, because uh, you could get calculators that were cheaper that didn't have a memory function. So that's what the box looks like. You can read that there if you want. Runs on a 9 volt battery. Had a one year warranty. Box is copyright 1977. And just all the same on the top. Nothing in the box. Didn't get the manual. But don't need it anyway. So the calculator is pretty nice. It has a vacuum fluorescent display which is pretty cool. And there's all the buttons there. On the back. Oh, on the side you have a uh, AC adapter jack. Uh, there was an optional AC adapter you could get, and it's funny to think, you know, someone would actually get an AC adapter to use a pocket calculator with instead of just buying batteries for it. But a uh, 9 volt DC, of course, and it's a funny looking 2.5 millimeter headphone jack type thing. And it says Texas Instruments Electronic Calculator. A dim or erratic display indicates a discharged battery. There's the battery compartment, just like my TI-30, you stick a flat object in there and pry the door open. Interestingly enough, the serial number plate is absolutely blank. I don't know why, that's really weird. It was made in the USA, which is awesome. And the date code is the second week of 1978. Yeah, it's just patent information there. Now interestingly enough, these were actually made in several different countries. Um, besides the USA, they were also made in El Salvador, Spain, and Hong Kong. Um, I can only assume that the USA units were higher quality, but I really don't know. Perhaps they all, all the parts came from the same places and they were just assembled in different places, I don't know. And interestingly enough, uh, YouTube user UXW Bill has made a video of this calculator and his was a 1977 unit I believe and I believe it was also made in the USA and interestingly enough his did have a serial number I don't know why mine doesn't that's really weird but uh, anyway we'll turn it on here and it works very nicely now you can't tell on the camera it looks just fine on the camera but the display is actually really dim it's a lot dimmer than uh, what you'd expect for a vacuum fluorescent display I'm guessing the reason is, is because if you look on the Datamath uh, website, datamath.org, it's a great website with uh, just about every Texas Instruments calculator ever made, and they have pictures of the circuitry inside this, and there doesn't appear to be a transformer to uh, run the high voltage component of the display, so I would guess they're probably running the display straight off the 9 volt battery. And that's why it's slightly dim, because the optimal voltage for a vacuum fluorescent display is from like 12 to 15 volts. But it is bright enough to see by, and uh, it works good nonetheless. And uh, we'll punch some numbers in here. Now another thing the camera makes it seem different is, 
the camera makes the display look like it's the natural vacuum fluorescent display color, but it's actually kind of a greenish tint to it. I think this uh, front plastic here is probably a green filter, and it looks pretty cool. So we'll do some calculations here. Another thing with UXW Bill's unit is uh, when you do calculations on his unit, it uh, it doesn't blank the display while it's calculating, so you can see all the numbers flickering through the display. Interestingly enough, mine does uh, blank the display, so it just looks like a modern calculator. See, it blanks the display while it's doing it. So, uh, that, was, that was just a little bit disappointing, but oh well. Jeez, I, I mean, it's just a basic calculator. There's not much to do here. But uh, there's the error, if there's an overflow. And uh, this is the first calculator I've ever had where I actually knew how to use the memory function. I never could figure out how to do it on any basic calculator, but with this thing it's so easy. And perhaps it's the same on other calculators too, but uh, MC clears the memory. MR means take, take whatever is in the memory and copy it to the display. M minus means take whatever's on the display and subtract the memory from it. So whatever's in the memory, subtract whatever's in the display. And M plus means add whatever's in the memory to whatever's in the display. So if I just put a number 5 in memory here with M plus, and if I recall the memory here, there it's 5. And if I take 9 and press M plus, it does 9 plus 5. So now in the memory is 14. Likewise, I could put in 15 and do M minus, and now in the memory should be negative 1. So there you go. Pretty simple enough. Um, other functions here, you can take any number and uh, change the sign of it. The percentage key just automatically divides by 100, which is very nice. And you've got your basic four functions. Um, the on key does work such that, let's say I'm doing a calculation here and I, I want to do 6 times 5. Well, let's say I accidentally put 6 times 6. Well, before I hit equals, I can hit clear, and then I can put in 5 and do the calculation. So, uh, very, very nice. Oh, something I should mention is the buttons, the keypad, is absolutely beautiful. It works flawlessly. I was so, I, I was very pleased to see that there you won't miss a beat uh, on these buttons there's no key bounce whatsoever unlike on my TI-30 which has horrible key bounce I don't know why they didn't use these types of buttons on the other calculators but uh, it's absolutely beautiful no key bounce whatsoever very nice uh, this was the TI-1025 was one in a series of three models of basic calculators. The base model was the TI-1000, which had an LED display and did not have the memory function. Then there was this unit, and then the unit above this one was the TI-1050, which in addition to a vacuum fluorescent display and the memory buttons, it also had a couple other functions. It had square root, and it had a function to exchange whatever was in the memory with whatever was in the display. Similar, similar to the uh, exchange function on my uh, TI-30. And uh, what they mention on the box about the uh, automatic constant feature, that means I could do, say, two times. If I wanted to do two times two over and over again, I just have to press two times, and I can just keep pressing equals over and over again. And likewise, now I could uh, do times ten, say, and now it'll keep multiplying that number by ten. And uh, another thing is, let's say I have a number in memory, put 5 into memory here, and uh, if I want to take that number and do a calculation to it, so whatever's in memory times 9, say, it'll put it up on the display, but uh, it'll keep that 5 in memory. There is one annoying thing about this calculator, though, and that is, uh, despite having the electronic uh, power on, where you just press a button to turn it on and another button to turn it off, this thing does not have automatic shutoff. Once you turn it on, it'll keep running till the battery goes flat. And uh, that's actually happened to me on a, a couple of occasions. Um, the battery that's currently in this, it's, uh, it's the only battery I've ever had in it, and it's about half dead now because uh, on a couple of occasions I'd have this in my book bag, 
and uh, it would uh, it would accidentally you know turn on it bump against something and hit the on button and uh, I wouldn't know until like eight hours later when I hauled it out of my book bag and there it is on so uh, yeah I kept a spare 9 volt battery on me when I was using this for class uh, just in case I ever you know went into a test or something in, digi in digital systems only to find out that the battery had died I kept a spare battery in my book bag there is one uh, design defect in the TI-1025 and that is the print on the buttons wears very easily. Um, if you look at used units on eBay, s some of them are so bad that you can't even read the numbers. This gold print just wears right off after use, a lot of use. Um, that would mean this thing was used very little, if ever at all, because the print on it looks great. So that's quite nice. Um, I'll open up the battery compartment here. So you just take an object, pry the battery cover off, and uh, there's your 9 volt battery. It's connected to a, uh, a connector clip on wires. And uh, I do not know if you can have a battery in this while plugged into the AC adapter or if it'll try to charge it. I would hope they designed it such that uh, you could do either, but I really don't know. And uh, it's hard to open these things up because they're held together with clips that could uh, possibly break when you open it So I've never bothered to uh, open this thing to find out But uh, that's pretty much all there is to show of the Texas Instruments TI-1025 basic calculator from 1978 It's a very nice very rock-solid calculator um, other than the key print wear, there was really no manufacturing defects in it, and there were no bugs in the uh, in the calculating algorithm, just no known bugs in it at all. You know, these things were just classic Texas instruments. These were reliable and durable as heck, and uh, these things sold so well, they're dirt cheap on eBay too. They're very common and cheap to find. You can get a used one for as little as like five bucks. You can get a mint one with the box like mine for as little as ten bucks. So uh, it's really a rock solid calculator. And uh, you know, if you like vintage calculators and you think you might want to grab one that uh, you could use for real, um, you can't go wrong with one of these. I mean, it's just a very fine and dandy calculator. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.